Hello everyone. Today we'll be discussing about the recruitment maneuver that you do in ARD patient, especially when there is refractory hypoxemia. Let us discuss recruitment maneuver. Right. So the first is what is the concept? What is the idea behind it? So the idea is by giving recruitment maneuver, we intend to increase the transpulmonary pressure. So when the transpulmonary pressure, which is the difference between the alveolar pressure and the pleural pressure increases, so there will be opening of collapsed alveoli. Right. So when the collapsed alveoli they open, what will happen is the compliance will improve, number one. The stiff flung will become a little bit lighter. The compliance will improve and there will be increase in oxygenation. Right. And because the compliance will improve, that will also reduce the villi. Right. Second is when to do it. Right. Answer is very simple. Refractory hypoxemia in ARDS patient. Right? This is very simple. And how to do it? This is the important question we have to deal. How to do it? So I divide it into two types. Number one will be sustained inflation. Right. And number two will be staircase inflation. So in sustained inflation, there are different types. Number one will be, technique will be in pressure control ventilation, put the respiratory rate at zero, put the PEEP at around 40 to 45 centimeter of water and keep it for approximately time 40 seconds right this is called sustained inflation in the first 10 minute only 10 seconds sorry only you will find maximum uh, recruitment because you are dealing with a very high peep so later later after 10 seconds, there will be hemodynamic instability. So we have to be very careful. Right? So number two method is again in pressure control ventilation, put the pressure control at around 20, peep at around 20, put the respirator at 4 to 6, Increase the inspirator time at least 4 to 5 seconds, right? And keep everything of this for 2 minutes because we have to watch for the hemodynamic instability, right? So, this is one method. This is one method. And the third method is providing psi breaths. So, what are psi breaths? Psi breaths are intermittent high peep breaths. Usually it is provided three psi breaths per minute and it can only be provided in ventilator which has the facility to provide psi breaths. This is not practiced nowadays too much but these two procedures are frequently performed i personally love this method the second method right now coming to the staircase inflation what happens in staircase inflation here also we will put the patient in pressure control ventilation right and secondly we will put a pressure control level which will be 15 centimeter of water higher than peep right so this difference we have to maintain for example if you are putting pressure control level of 
10, then we have to keep the pip around 25. So this difference is 15. If it is 20, then we have to put it 35. So difference is 15. So this difference can be also called driving pressure from our previous classes. right? So then what we'll do is we'll change the pip in sequence right from 20 to 30 to 40 right and the timing will be so we'll keep this pip 20 30 and 40 for two minutes each right as you discuss you have to keep the difference between pip and pressure control 15 right so at this level the pressure control will be 55 right so once the patient is on P40 for two minutes, then what will he do? Then we'll decrease the PEEP. Decrease the PEEP to 25. Right. Then gradually decrease the PEEP to from 25 to 22.5 then to 20, then to 17.5, then to 15. This is the bare minimum. And all this while you keep them on these peeps at two min for two minutes, right? And we have to observe the saturation. While we are decreasing the peep, there will be a point when the SpO2 will decrease by 1%. That will the point of de-recruitment. For example, let's say in this case, in our case at 20, the SpO2 decreased by 1%. So this will be called the de-recruitment point. So it is at this point there is de-recruitment, right? So now what to do? So again, we have to increase the PEEP to 40 because while decreasing at this point we have de-recruited the lung so we have to one second recruit the lung so again you have to bring the peep to 40 and keep for one minute so again it will be recruited right then what is the final peep for our patient because you have seen it is de-recruiting at 20 so we have to keep 2.5 centimeter above our D recruitment point that is our 20 so so peep for this patient will be the final peep will be 22.5 because D recruitment point is 20 2.5 above is 22.5 so this will be our peep after recruitment maneuver right so this is called the staircase inflation method now let us discuss what is the evidence. So the evidence are against it, right? There are two major trials, ART and Farlap trial. Both suggest that it's not be routinely done. So if one message you have to take home from our discussion today, do not do it routinely. In every person, no. And because there is complication. So lots of complication including cardiac arrest can happen in your patient if you are not careful. And there is no guidelines. Guidelines do not exist in the matter of when to do it, how to do it. We have seen there are varieties of method what to do how long to do it, right? Which ventilator we are using for our patient. So there are different variables are there. So there is no concrete guidelines. So there is a reason why the evidence are against it. So do not do it routinely. When not to do it? When not to do it? Number one, hemodynamic instability. Patients on vasopressors do not do it. What will happen? Because of high intrathoracic pressure during recruitment maneuver, 
there will be impedance of venous return and there will be decrease in venous return and it can exacerbate the already existing hemodynamic instability second patient with having pre-existing bulla or pneumomediastinum or pneumothorax in those patients it can produce tension pneumothorax so do not do it third one single lung if patient is having single lung do not do it if the disease process is homogeneous recruitment maneuver will be very much helpful however if single lung is involved then do not do it it can over distance the other lung and produce barotrauma right and four never do it in increase icp right never do it in a traumatic brain injury patient with ARDS who may have an increase in icp do not do it so a traumatic brain injury patient who is having ARDS may have an increase in icp do not do it because there will be decrease in venous return from the upper extremities and it can increase the icp to a dangerous level producing herniation right so today we discuss the recruitment maneuver the idea behind it when to do it how to do it different methods and what are the evidence and when not to do it thank you very much